They develop technologies decades ahead of their time. Their projects are classified, and some of them haven't even been officially acknowledged to this day. This is where the most advanced fighter jets, stealth aircraft, and unmanned systems were born. Systems that changed the course of history. This is Skunk Works. A secret division within Lockheed Martin, designing the weapons of the future, today. The division was founded in 1943 during World War II, when the U.S. Army Air Forces, the predecessor of the modern U.S. Air Force, turned to Lockheed with an urgent request. They needed America's first jet fighter, fast. Time was running out. Germany already had the Messerschmitt Me 262, and the United States needed a response immediately. Enter Clarence Kelly Johnson, an aerospace legend. He gathered a small team of engineers who, in just 143 days, built the XP-80 Shooting Star, Lockheed's first jet-powered aircraft. This marked the birth of a unique work philosophy, one that would later become known as Skunk Works. But where did that odd name come from? The term Skunk Works, literally, Stinky Factory, started as an inside joke. In the 1940s comic, Lil Abner, there was a place called Skunk Works, a grimy, smelly plant producing a mysterious elixir. One Lockheed engineer, bothered by the overpowering smell of plastics and the rough conditions they worked in, jokingly started calling their lab by that name. It stuck, though due to copyright, Skunk was tweaked to Skunk. Since then, the Skunk has become the unofficial mascot of the division still proudly displayed on their emblem. At the core of Skunk Works is one principle, maximum autonomy, minimum bureaucracy. That's how they pull off what others think is impossible. Kelly Johnson, the division's first leader, laid out 14 management rules that remain a gold standard for innovation-driven projects. Among them, the minimum number of people, only the best engineers, a minimum of managers, direct access to the customer, no layers of middlemen, simple paperwork, full creative freedom for the team, rapid development cycles, work in conditions of the strictest secrecy. These principles make it possible to develop entirely new classes of technology on tight timelines. Take the SR-71 Blackbird, for example a one-of-a-kind aircraft built in the 1960s that still hasn't been surpassed in many respects. It was so secret. Even the titanium for its body had to be purchased covertly through front companies from the Soviet Union. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the legendary creations that came out of Skunk Works. By the mid-1950s, the United States was in desperate need of a way to gather intelligence over Soviet territory. Satellites didn't exist yet, and the challenge was to design an aircraft that could fly at altitudes unreachable by Soviet interceptors or air defenses. That's how the U-2 was born, a high-altitude reconnaissance plane developed in just eight months. It could soar to over 21,000 meters, which in 1956 felt almost like science fiction. The U-2 flew missions over the USSR, China, Cuba, Vietnam, collecting vital intelligence that couldn't be obtained any other way. In fact, it was a U-2 that captured images of Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba, the photos that triggered the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. The plane became a symbol of the Cold War. Its shootdown over Soviet territory in 1960 and the capture of pilot Gary Powers caused an international scandal. And here's the incredible part. The U-2 is still in active service, nearly 70 years later. The modernized version is currently in use, including for monitoring the war in Ukraine. If the U-2 was a glider-like spy plane, the SR-71 was a rocket-shaped spear flying on the edge of what's physically possible. Developed under the codename Oxcart, the goal of the project was to build an aircraft faster than any missile and it came pretty close. The SR-71 remains the fastest manned aircraft in history, 
its top speed exceeds Mach 3.5. That's over 3,700 kilometers an hour, and it could reach altitudes above 25 kilometers. During flight tests, the plane would literally start to melt from the friction. Its surface could heat up to 600 degrees Celsius, which is why it had to be built almost entirely out of titanium. And yes, 85% of titanium was indeed purchased through shell companies from the Soviet Union, the main enemy over which the SR-71 was supposed to fly. The Blackbird was untouchable. More than 4,000 surface-to-air missiles were launched at it. Not a single one ever hit. Its only defense was speed. If a missile was coming, it simply accelerated and outran it. The SR-71 served from 1966 to 1998, spending its final years conducting reconnaissance for NASA and the Pentagon. To this day, no officially acknowledged aircraft has matched its performance. It was Skunk Works that gave the world the first operational stealth technology, making aircraft nearly invisible to radar. The F-117 attack aircraft was a revolution. Instead of smooth aerodynamic curves, it had a jagged, angular shape, optimized not for flight, but to reflect as little radar as possible. Its design was based on computer modeling, which itself was built on research by Soviet physicist Pyotr Ufimtasev, whose work on radar wave diffraction had been published in open sources. The Americans translated his papers and turned theory into technology. The aircraft was so classified, the U.S. government didn't officially confirm its existence until seven years after its first flight. The F-117 flew combat missions in Panama, the Persian Gulf, and Kosovo. It was this jet that struck Baghdad at the start of the Gulf War in 1991, slipping past Iraq's dense air defense network without being seen. Interestingly, the F-117 wasn't a fighter at all, it was a bomber. But the F, for fighter, was added to its designation as a cover. The F-22 Raptor is the world's first fifth-generation fighter jet. It combines stealth, extreme agility, supersonic speed without afterburners, powerful sensors, and precision weaponry. The F-22 was designed for total air dominance. It doesn't just win in a dogfight, it eliminates threats before the enemy even knows it's there but the program proved too expensive. Only 187 aircraft were ever built before production was halted. That made the F-22 a rare, elite machine, one that was never exported. The F-35 Lightning II is a flying supercomputer, fully integrated into the NATO military network. It comes in three versions, for conventional air forces, for the Navy, with short takeoff and vertical landing, and for aircraft carriers. The F-35 is in service in over 15 countries. Despite early controversies over cost overruns and delays, the F-35 has become the West's central combat platform, both in numbers and in capabilities. Today, Skunk Works continues to operate by the same principles it followed back in the 1940s, small teams, full autonomy, and direct collaboration with the military. Only now, the technology is on a completely different level. Their core mission is to design weapons and systems meant to stay relevant 30 to 50 years into the future. It's not just airplanes, we're talking network-centric warfare, AI, autonomous drones, hypersonics, quantum sensors, and combat lasers. One of the most secretive and talked about projects in recent years is NGAD next generation air dominance. This is a future sixth generation fighter meant to replace the F-22. Very little is known about the project. Almost everything about the program is top secret. But leaks and analysis give us some clues. NGAD will be stealthy, not just to radar, but to infrared and multispectral sensors as well. It will command a swarm of drones handling reconnaissance, air defense suppression, and strike missions. It will work alongside artificial intelligence and communicate in real time with every other combat platform in the air, on land, and at sea. Its speed, ceiling, range, and firepower are expected to far exceed anything currently in service. 
The design is said to be modular, allowing the aircraft to quickly switch roles from interceptor to unmanned drone strike. In 2020, the U.S. Air Force confirmed that a flight-ready prototype had already been built and flown. It's widely believed that Skunk Works is behind it. Another cutting-edge development is a next-generation drone known by the codename Speed Racer. This project revolutionized the way aircraft are designed. Instead of taking years, the entire process, from concept to prototype, took just a few months. Everything was done digitally. No paper blueprints, no physical mock-ups. Speed Racer was built to be cheap and mass-producing. It can carry out reconnaissance, electronic warfare, escort missions, or act as a decoy, drawing enemy fire and mimicking a real aircraft. It's designed to operate in networked combat environments and can be piloted either manually or autonomously by AI. A key innovation behind it is the Star Drive architecture, which allows for full-scale system integration and testing in virtual reality before the physical prototype is even built. Another project, known from leaks, is BEAST, Battlefield Engagement and Superiority Tracker. It's said to be a modular, partially unmanned platform that Skunk Works is allegedly testing in conjunction with the F-22 and F-35. BEAST could function as a fighter drone or a strike platform, carrying modular payloads, missiles, electronic warfare gear, sensors. It's designed to operate deep behind enemy lines, escorting manned aircraft. This is part of the Loyal Wingman concept, a trusted AI-powered partner for human pilots. Skunk Works is actively developing laser systems for both defense and attack. One example is AHEL, Airborne High Energy Laser, that will be mounted on AC-130 gunships, and possibly even on the F-22 or F-35. The goal? To destroy missiles, drones, and even ground targets at the speed of light, without ammo, noise, or trace. In 2022, the company confirmed successful ground tests of the laser, and by 2024, it's scheduled to be installed on a flight platform. Skunk Works is also integrating artificial intelligence into combat systems. It's not just about automation, but about real, tactical AI, which helps pilots make decisions in combat and analyzes sensor data in real time. It can autonomously control drones and make combat decisions in communication conditions. Skunk Works AI has been tested in simulations where one autonomous system has defeated ace pilots in aerial combat. Skunk Works is racing to master hypersonic technology, developing guided missiles and aircraft that can travel at over Mach 5, 6,000 kilometers an hour and above. One such project was HTV-3X Black Swift, a hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft. Though officially canceled, its development continues under different names. An unmanned SR-72 hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft, informally called the Son of the Blackbird, is also possible. According to rumors, the SR-72 already exists as a prototype and flew from Groom Lake Air Base, commonly known as Area 51. At first glance, Skunk Works might seem like just another division of Lockheed Martin, but in reality, it's the aviation world's equivalent of the Manhattan Project. Only this one never stopped. What makes Skunk Works truly special? For one, a culture rooted in trust and speed. To this day, the guiding principle remains. If you're an engineer, you make decisions. You don't just follow orders. There's no endless chain of approvals, no stacks of liability paperwork for every screw. If the idea works, it moves forward. As Kelly Johnson once said, no paperwork, just brains, logic, and persistence. In today's defense industry, that spirit is all but extinct. Skunk Works is the last stronghold of true engineering freedom. In fact, Johnson was the only person in Lockheed allowed to make decisions without first getting approval from top management. No one else enjoyed that level of trust. In 1975, he was succeeded by Ben Rich, another giant in Skunk Works history. He wrote the memoir, Skunk Works, a personal memoir of my years at Lockheed, a definitive insider's look at the division's inner workings. With honesty and dry humor, Rich recounts clashes with the military, battles with bureaucracy, secret test flights, 
and life in a lab where every day felt like war, just without the bullets. Skunk Works doesn't focus on today's problems. It builds what will matter in 30, even 50 years, often with no clear idea what the future will look like. How will radar evolve? Can AI truly replace a pilot? What threats will exist two generations from now? And yet, they get it right. The U-2 has been in service since 1956. The SR-71 still has no equal. The F-117 kicked off the stealth era. The F-22, built in the 1990s, is still regarded as the best air superiority fighter in the world. The ability to see the future and build for it is a big reason why even entire government agencies can't replace what Skunk Works brings to the table. Skunk Works operates in what feels like a parallel universe. They don't hold press conferences. They don't publish beautiful 3D renders. They don't show up at trade shows. Their projects only come to light after the fact, sometimes years later. So when the US Air Force suddenly admitted in 2020 that a sixth generation fighter already existed, analysts knew it had to be Skunk Works. No other organization could pull it off in total secrecy, from scratch, and at that speed. Skunk Works is not just a laboratory, it's an engineering legend, one that reshaped how we think about warfare, technology, and what's possible when the government works hand in hand with private innovation for national security. Whatever they're working on now, we probably won't find out for another 10 to 20 years. While the rest of the world chases the tech of today, Skunk Works is designing what will matter in 2075. Have you ever wondered what war would look like 50 years from now? The answer might already exist, it's just still classified at Skunk Works.